Prince, Prince Harry's name has been mentioned in court documents related to allegations. Sean Diddy Combs sexually abused multiple people. A $30 million lawsuit brought by record producer Rodney Jones claims Diddy's affiliation with high-profile people such as Prince Harry gave his actions legitimacy. In his memoir, Spare, Prince Harry delved into the details of arranging for Sean Diddy Combs to perform at a special concert commemorating Princess Diana. The Duke of Sussex's name surfaced in a legal document filed in a lawsuit initiated by music producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones, alleging trafficking against the rapper. However, there's no implication that Harry had prior knowledge of the accusations against Combs, nor has he been implicated in any wrongdoing. He is simply named as somebody that Diddy claimed to have access to in an attempt to draw people to his parties. And when you actually click into these stories, you will find that. In his memoir, Spare, Harry makes a fleeting mention of his sole encounter with Combs during a concert commemorating his mother, Princess Diana. The event, co-hosted by Prince William, took place in July 2007. He wrote, To mark the 10th anniversary of our mother's death, Willie and I organized a concert in her honor. The proceeds would go to her favorite charities and to a new charity I'd just launched, Senti Bale. He further added, While planning the concert, Willie and I were emotionless. All business. It's the anniversary. We need to do this. There are a million details, full stop. The venue had to be big enough, and the tickets had to be priced right, and the entertainers had to be A-list, Elto John, Duran Duran, P. Diddy. Harry's mention of Combs paralleled the fleeting mention of him in the court filing, implying that the meeting didn't leave Harry with any significant or memorable impressions. Rather, he spends most of his time discussing Elton John, who was both Harry and Diana's buddy when she was alive. The prince wrote, As the song ended, Elton jumped up, introduced us, their royal highnesses, Prince William and Prince Harry. The applause was deafening, like nothing we'd ever heard. We'd been applauded in the streets, at polo games, parades, operas, but never in a place this cavernous or in a context this charged. Willie walked out, I followed, each of us wearing a blazer and open shirt as if going to a school dance. We were both frightfully nervous. If Harry had once sung praises about his adoration for Combs, he'd find himself in an uncomfortably awkward situation today, given the surge of allegations against the musician that have been steadily mounting since November. Homeland Security also conducted a raid on Combs' residences on Monday, March 25th. Law enforcement sources are telling ABC News that right now authorities are carrying out searches at properties associated with P. Diddy. This is all part of a federal investigation into human trafficking. They also say that this investigation has been on. As it stands, barring the revelation of additional evidence, the nebulous link between them seems improbable to impact Harry in the same manner that Prince Andrew's association with Jeffrey Epstein tarnished the Duke of York's standing. A filing from Jones's New York civil lawsuit seen by Newsweek reads, Mr. Combs was known for throwing the best parties. Affiliation with and or general business partnerships with Mr. Combs garnered legitimacy, immense success, and access to top and emerging artists, celebrities, famous athletes, political figures, musicians, and international dignitaries like the British Royal and Prince Harry. Harry's inclusion in the document remains singularly unexplained, leaving ample room for speculation as to why he was even mentioned. With the case still in its infancy, additional information may surface in due course. Aaron Dyer, Combs's attorney, said in a statement, there was a gross overuse of military-level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs's residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Aaron Dyer stated that Diddy had never been detained but had spoken to and cooperated with authorities. He mentioned that despite media speculation, neither Diddy nor any of his family members had been arrested, nor had their ability to travel been restricted in any way. He said, Mr. Combs was never detained, but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. Dyer described the situation as an unprecedented ambush, combined with an advanced, coordinated media presence. He believed this led to a premature rush to judgment of Diddy, 
characterizing it as a witch hunt based on meritless accusations from civil lawsuits. He added, this unprecedented ambush, paired with an advanced, coordinated media presence, leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. He emphasized that there had been no finding of criminal or civil liability regarding any of these allegations. Dyer asserted that Diddy was innocent and would continue to fight every day to clear his name. He said, there has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. The veil of mystery still shrouds the motives behind the federal raids on the residences of renowned musician Sean Combs in Los Angeles and Miami, which took place in March. According to reports from both the Associated Press and the Los Angeles Times, this action forms a crucial component of an extensive investigation into trafficking conducted by Homeland Security. Despite this, the department has refrained from confirming specifics regarding the focus of the inquiry or the nature of the alleged crimes under investigation. A lot of you don't know about this because it's been hidden. All this is fake. Everything's been hidden. Everything that you know is a lie. We wasn't messing with nobody. These folks were so jealous, they figured out a way to get a plane and drop bombs on us. The raids ensued following a string of legal actions targeting Combs, often recognized as Diddy, accusing him of mistreatment, inappropriate behavior, and involvement in trafficking. Seven distinct legal actions, including a claim initiated by his ex-partner Cassandra Ventura, present intricate accusations involving instances of rape, mistreatment, and administering drugs. Certain individuals of significant influence and affluence within Combs's sphere face direct allegations from plaintiffs, ranging from complicity in witnessing mistreatment without intervention to alleged drug provision. Meanwhile, figures such as Prince Harry and Nicki Minaj are merely cited in passing without any accusations leveled against them. For an extensive period, the hip-hop tycoon has been encircled by allegations of aggression, occasionally entangling other widely recognized figures. These well-known individuals are connected to the allegations made against Combs, R&B singer Aaron Hall. In a legal filing lodged last November in the New York Supreme Court, Aaron Hall, renowned for his R&B contributions as a member of the group Guy, found himself listed as a defendant alongside Combs. This action was initiated just before the conclusion of New York's Adult Survivors Act, legislation permitting a one-year window for individuals to pursue cases of mistreatment beyond the conventional statute of limitations. Liza Gardner, the plaintiff, claims that Combs and Hall mistreated her and a companion in Hall's flat following an MCA Records-hosted music business event in 1990 when she was 16 years old. She says Combs coerced her into having with him and that afterward, Hall barged into the room, pinned her down and forced her to have sex with him too. The accuser further claims that Combs tracked her down to her residence and forcibly throttled her until she lost consciousness, allegedly motivated by his fear of his girlfriend discovering the altercation, according to the legal filing. In a video on YouTube that is included in the complaint, Hall claims that Combs's 1990s alias, Puffy, witnessed him engaging in shady activity. Hall could not be reached for a statement. As of April 8, court documents had yet to disclose the identity of his attorney. Harve Pierre, a prominent music producer, found himself embroiled in legal disputes just before the expiration of the Adult Survivors Act. Two separate lawsuits were initiated, both anonymously, targeting Pierre and involving Combs. The legal actions were filed in the New York Supreme Court and the U.S. District Court in the Southern District of New York, with the plaintiff identified as Jane Doe in both cases. Pierre stood as the inaugural member of Bad Boy Records' workforce, serving as the cornerstone in the early days of Bad Boy Entertainment as its president. His collaborative efforts extended to renowned artists such as the notorious Big and Faith Evans, shaping the label's influential journey in the music industry. In the initial legal action lodged in November 2023, a former staffer at Bad Boy serving as Pierre's aide alleges that Pierre leveraged his authority to exploit and mistreat her. The filing further contends that Combs and his enterprises facilitated the misconduct. 
The complainant in a second case filed in December 2023 claims that Combs, Pierre and an unidentified third defendant gang mistreated and trafficked her in 2003 when she was 17 years old. She specifically claims that Pierre forced her to have oral sex with him after smoking crack cocaine and then flew her from Detroit to New York City on a private jet. According to the complaint, the plaintiff was allegedly provided with substance and alcohol at a studio owned by Combs in New York, before being subjected to rape by the defendants. Pierre himself has refuted the allegations outlined in the second complaint. This is a tale of fiction. I have never participated in, witnessed, nor heard of anything like this, ever. These disgusting allegations are false and a desperate attempt for financial gain, he said in a statement obtained by TMZ. In March, Rodney Jones Jr., known professionally as Lil Rod, filed a revised lawsuit in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York, naming Cuba Gooding Jr. as a defendant. Jones alleges that Gooding engaged in acts of mistreatment. Mr. Jones says that Cuba was pretty hand-friendly. He alleges that Cuba groped and fondled him in his private parts. In particular, Jones alleges that Combs groomed him with the intention of introducing him to Gooding. As per the complaint, the duo found themselves alone in an impromptu studio aboard a yacht rented by Combs. There, Gooding began touching, groping and fondling Mr. Jones's legs, his upper inner thighs near his groin, the small of his back near his buttocks, and his shoulders. The complaint alleges, in the past, the actor entered a guilty plea to a misdemeanor charge of forceful touching. We have obtained video of Cuba Gooding Jr. touching the woman who's accusing him of sexually assaulting her. And you see that he clearly makes contact with this woman's backside. It's kind of unclear if it's on her butt or her lower back, but you can tell immediately once she touches him that... Lucian Grange, who serves as the CEO of Universal Music Group and is also known as the father-in-law of Sophia Ritchie, is named as a defendant in Jones's amended complaint submitted to the U.S. District Court in the Southern District of New York. He stands accused of allegedly assisting Combs, particularly in activities related to racketeering and trafficking. Universal's Motown Records had a licensing arrangement with Combs Love Records. The complaint says that as CEO, Grange had a duty to ensure that the financial support they provided to Sean Combs and Love Records was not being used for sex workers, drugs and laced alcohol. Attorneys for Grange have filed a motion to dismiss, in which they called the accusations offensively false. In a sworn statement to the court, Grange called the accusations completely untrue and absurd and said he plans to pursue both plaintiffs and his counsel for having made such false accusations. Grange also points to the fact that he is the CEO of a multinational public company and is not involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the company's thousands of agreements. In a statement to Business Insider, Grange's attorney, Donald S. Zacharin, called the complaint offensively reckless. He said, the plaintiff has now attempted to amend his claims against Solution, removing the original set of outrageous falsehoods related to Solution, replacing them with wholly contradictory new falsehoods that are equally absurd. Not only will we demonstrate the offensive falsity of these claims, but we will seek recovery of every penny of cost and damage caused by their assertion. Although not a prominent figure in his own regard, Justin Dior Combs, the 30-year-old son of Diddy, is listed as a defendant in Jones's revised complaint filed in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. Jones accuses Justin Combs of engaging in freak-offs and soliciting young girls and workers in a long list of accusations. The new allegations against John Diddy Combs, a music producer, is accusing hip-hop mogul of sexually assaulting him and forcing him to have sex with prostitutes. He further asserts that apart from himself, only the younger and older Combs were in the room when G, a friend of his, was shot at a recording studio, suggesting that one of them may have been the shooter. Justin Combs was present at his family's Los Angeles residence during a federal raid, where he was observed restrained with handcuffs on the lawn outside. However, it's important to note that he was not taken into custody. Justin Combs' lawyer, Jeffrey Lickman, said that the complaint was utterly bonkers on his radio show Beyond the Legal Limit. It's clearly written in an effort to get as much publicity as possible, not only for the case, but for the lawyer whose name I don't even remember. Literally some maniac, he said. 
Young Miami, a City Girls member, is cited in Jones's updated complaint lodged in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. Notably, she is neither listed as a defendant nor implicated in any allegations of misconduct. She is suspected of carrying Combs Chuchi, a narcotic frequently referred to as pink cocaine, via a private jet and is identified as a participant in Combs's trafficking business. The accusation states that she was employed under a monthly stipend as one of Combs' workers. Additionally, it claims that her cousin, identified as Jane Doe, mistreated Jones by engaging in non-consensual oral pleasure. With some of these, why are not together no more? Um, because, like he was, you know, he was fucking up, he wasn't ready, and I was trying to be a woman and work through things, and he wasn't ready. So then I was like, fuck it, and I left. In his updated legal filing submitted to the U.S. District Court in the Southern District of New York, Jones asserts that Stevie J, a Grammy-winning artist known for his long-standing partnership with Combs, was involved in soliciting workers and engaging in Combs' gatherings referred to as freak-offs. Notably, while Jones implicates Stevie J in these activities, he refrains from directly naming him as a defendant in the case. Jones accuses Combs of instructing Stevie J to teach him the type of sex workers to solicit and the way to solicit them. Jones also accuses Stevie J of sending threatening messages when Jones publicly asked Combs to pay him for his work on Combs's The Love Album. According to the complaint, Combs coerced Jones into having to sleep with him by using his relationship with Jones's idol, Stevie J. I've never seen my man do anything foul like they are talking about. I've never seen it. I've known him for 29 years, Stevie J told TMZ earlier this month. In 2018, a former male escort named Jonathan AI revealed some startling information in a police video. He alleged that he was held against his will by Diddy and his ex, Cassie Ventura. AI made bombshell claims during the interrogation, stating that he had numerous encounters with both Puff Daddy and Cassie, purportedly up to 15 times. He even mentioned the existence of tapes documenting these encounters. Adding to the intrigue, Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, also weighed in on the situation. He said, I heard that there are supposed to be some tapes or something coming out real soon, and I guess we'll all really know the truth if anything's on those tapes. The mystery surrounding Jonathan A.I.'s fate remains elusive. Speculation suggests he may have passed away, yet concrete information is scarce. Fast forward to the present, where accusations of mistreatment against Diddy by Cassie and others have brought Jonathan's past claims back into focus. This isn't merely recent hearsay. Jonathan first spoke out in 2018, long before Diddy's current troubles. Diddy allegedly repeatedly essayed him. He said while working for Diddy, he was subjected to Diddy's associates' unwanted advances. Mr. Jones claims that he was groped by his groin area and by his... He alleges that Diddy would even walk around in the nude in front of him. Jones also believes that he was being groomed to be intimate with Diddy's associates. He recounted involvement in dubious activities with Diddy's circle, even implicating Diddy in sabotaging his escorting job. In a recorded interrogation, Jonathan detailed the downward spiral of his life following his association with Diddy and Cassie, culminating in a confrontation with law enforcement that left him shot in the leg after breaking into a hotel. And alleges that Diddy forced him to watch a video of Stevie being intimate with another male. Allegedly, a female cousin of Young Miami allegedly tried to get intimate with Mr. Rodney Jones. He alleges that this female cousin tried to be intimate with him in front of Diddy and Diddy's staff members. Mr. Rodney Jones alleges that Diddy at one time had female SW workers at his home in Miami. He said that they were serving alcohol. He believes he was roofied and... Following his spillage of information encompassing substance, intimate acts, and even STDs, Jonathan found himself coerced into a settlement by Puff, likely in an attempt to maintain secrecy. However, this didn't deter Diddy's legal team from pursuing him, leaving Jonathan feeling pursued and hunted. 
Beyond the intimate details, Jonathan also made allegations about P. Diddy and Rick Ross's orientation, delving into the realm of the Illuminati and sinister rituals. Now, public opinion is divided. Some question Jonathan's credibility due to his mental health struggles, while others speculate that there may be truth to his claims. Back in 2018, authorities brushed off Jonathan's concerns, but now, amidst the swirl of accusations against Diddy, people are beginning to question. Rumors are circulating that Jonathan may have disappeared, sparking suspicions that perhaps Combs silenced him. And then there's the tragic saga of Cassie. She took bold legal action against Diddy in a New York federal court on November 16th, alleging multiple instances of mistreatment. Shockingly, she detailed an incident where she was coerced into intimate encounters with male employee while he looked on. In her lawsuit, the Me and You singer bravely stated that Diddy's temper was out of control, subjecting her to frequent and severe beatings. This is um, really, as they say, uh, uh, bombshell allegations here, and we want to stress these are Cassie's allegations and Diddy is denying all of this. But in the lawsuit, she does claim that uh, there was an incident in 2018 uh, here in L.A. that they had gone out to dinner and after dinner uh, went back to her place. She He dropped her off, but she claims that he forced his way into her home. In a formal statement, Ben Braffman, legal representative for Diddy, vehemently dismissed the accusations leveled against his client by Cassie. Braffman asserted that Cassie had been pursuing financial gain from the renowned Bad Boy Records founder. He clarified that Diddy has adamantly refuted these claims for the past six months. According to Braffman, Cassie persistently demanded $30 million from Diddy, threatening to publish a damaging expose about their relationship if her demands weren't met. Diddy firmly rejected what he perceived as blatant extortion tactics. In response, Cassie's attorney, Douglas Wigdall, countered by disclosing that Cassie and Diddy had engaged in discussions prior to the filing of the lawsuit. According to sources close to the situation, it's been alleged that the musician in question attempted to silence Cassie by offering her a significant sum of money, reportedly in the eight figures, to dissuade her from pursuing legal action. Despite the tempting offer, Cassie steadfastly refused to be silenced. In a recent turn of events, reports indicate that the NYPD has initiated an investigation into Diddy, formerly known as P. Diddy, Sean Combs, or other aliases he's used. Uh, thing in the, another allegation is that she says that Diddy, several times at different hotels around the country, would hire male prostitutes and force her to have sex with them. Cassie and Diddy's relationship had its ups and downs until their eventual split in 2018. Cassie has since moved on, tying the knot with her fitness trainer, Alex Fine, and the couple now enjoys parenthood with their two daughters. The lawsuit filed against Diddy unveils some disturbing allegations, including serious accusations of misconduct and coercion, indicating a troubling pattern of behavior that Cassie was allegedly subjected to, particularly involving male employees. This is the part of the suit where she's alleging sex trafficking because she's saying that this would happen over state lines, uh, and that's that would be the reason for filing this in federal court. Cassie portrays Diddy not just as the prominent figurehead of her record label, but also as someone she once perceived as her protector, only to find herself entangled in a twisted, unequal and violent relationship, as detailed in legal documents. Allegedly, Diddy employed coercive tactics to maintain control over Cassie, including vandalizing a man's car, menacing a friend by dangling them from a 17th floor balcony, and even requesting Cassie to carry his firearm in her purse. Shockingly, Cassie refrained from seeking police intervention out of fear that it would exacerbate Diddy's aggression. Naturally, Diddy vehemently refutes these accusations. So, that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned and we will catch you in the next video. Thanks!